In this video, I'm going to go over every muscle building principle that you need to worry about. What's important, what you need to focus on, and what's not important. So you will have, by the end of this video, a better idea on what you need to focus on to make more progress in the gym. Maybe there's things that you're doing well, but you might be missing out on some extra gains because you aren't aware of these principles. Or you're doing something that's really hindering your muscle growth. So let me get into it. First and foremost, volume and intensity and how to balance the two. For example, I would say 12 sets per workout with 10 sets to failure per workout is a good way to start within the 8 to 12 rep range. On average, this is an optimal range for most natural lifters. So a couple warm-up sets on your first two movements, let's say, and then the rest of the movements are taken till failure. So you're not really doing junk volume for the rest of your movements, apart from the first two. That way, I personally, I'm hitting a good amount of volume and intensity for optimal muscle growth. I also get good pumps. I train very hard. I don't get post-workout fatigue. I feel great afterwards, but people are different. People need more volume, people need less. People need more frequency, people need less. So as I said, this is on average. This is for a person like me, which is you know your average Joe. So take that as you will. So I'm gonna say 12 sets five times a week. So 60 sets per workout. 50 sets to failure. Some may need 40 sets to failure. Some may need 60 sets to failure, but you gotta figure that out, but no less than that, I would say. So take a week, pick five exercises to do, two sets to failure on each, five times a week. If you feel great pumps, no post-workout crash, unless it's like leg day, then you're gonna feel like shit afterwards. And you're growing, then it's working. If you're too tired, drop that to four days a week, or maybe even three. Either way, just going off experience, four or five days a week in the gym, five movements, 10 sets till failure, each workout is a great way to start and is as close as to optimal as you can get. But again, very subjective. You really just gotta know your own body, which comes with one thing and one thing only, experience. Number two is lifting equipment. And number three is time of day at which you exercise. These again are two subjective ones that depend entirely on the individual. There may be an exercise which is perfect for your anatomy. You feel a great contraction, a nasty pump, and it feels like you're actually doing a workout when you're doing it. That is the perfect machine slash exercise for you. But I may hop on it after you're done and it may feel like shit, bro. I may hate it. I may not feel it in the muscle at all. So there is no best equipment. There's only what's best for you. And then again, that comes with experimenting and consistency. As for workout timing, you may be stronger, more energetic in the evening or in the morning. Maybe more stronger, energetic, better pumps, fasted, or after one meal or after two meals, three meals. You again need to experiment and see what's best for you. Personally, I like to consume two to three meals before I work out, but that's me personally. You could feel like lethargic and feel like shit after you eat three meals. You may just prefer to go straight first thing in the morning fasted. Again, you need to figure that one out, but there is no right answer. But that could be an important principle to understand because at the end of the day, you want to go to the gym when you are the strongest because that's when you're going to see the best results because you can progressively overload optimally. Number four is going beyond failure with like force reps and drop sets and things like that. These can be very good, don't get me wrong, but they should be used very sparingly, i.e. definitely not every set and not as the main focus. I know now that two straight sets till concentric and eccentric failure is the best way to go and the most important thing you need to focus on. Really perfecting two quality sets till failure rather than get, you know, partials, drop sets, rest pauses. Just focus on finishing true failure, two straight sets. But say you're pressed for time or if you, you've hit a plateau in growth or strength and you wanna experiment, then yeah, definitely throw in a rest pause. Instead of two straight sets, you wanna do one rest pause set. Instead of two straight sets, you wanna do one drop set. This can also save a lot of time in the gym. If you're in a hurry, rest pauses and drop sets and force reps are a great way to push beyond failure, get the same amount of intensity in a short amount of time, and yeah, save time in the gym. And also if you're bored with your training split, throw those in, okay? It can make things more exciting. But remember that techniques like drop sets, rest pauses, which involve lowering the weight during the set or doing the same weight for more reps with 10 second rest between sets, can lead to junk volume if you are not doing them sparingly. Choose maybe one movement to do a drop set, one movement to do a rest pause, no more. On that note, the next main principle, training till failure. Make sure you're getting in a handful of hard sets per workout to maximize muscle growth. Similarly, manipulating intensity techniques should be included in your program. This is a lot of things that people don't get. So for example, what this means is, say you've done six weeks straight of training. You either should take a deload, rest a week, 
or do a week of just training with three reps shy of failure or five reps shy of failure. Don't go to failure for a week. Reps in reserve can be really important in overcoming plateaus and simulating adaptation during your deload weeks. Does that make sense? So this will allow you to recover better, allow for more adaptations before you go back into your four to six weeks of hard training again. Also, next one, auto-regulation, i.e. using instinct as a means to progress in the gym. This is vital to see progress and it is vital if you want to become an advanced lifter, enlightened lifter, as Sam Sulik says. You may choose the wrong weight for your working set. You may not like the machine you're using. You may not have a program to follow. Doesn't matter because with your instinct, you can work around these problems. By using your instinct or by having the ability to use your instincts, you know which exercise to switch to if this one's not feeling great, you know which exercise to do next, which exercises movements target the same muscle that is a better movement. You would know how many sets each muscle requires to fatigue it because you know your body so well. You know what to do first, which exercise to do first. You know how to gauge what weight to do using a less amount of reps to preserve volume for your hard sets. So you can just do like a couple reps, be like, yeah, I know which weight to use. Like that basically, just preserving your volume for the hard sets so that you avoid overtraining. And how do you learn how to use instinct? You educate yourself nonstop and you experience the gym. So you stay consistent. Next up are rotations and variations. These are essential for adaptation. You should always switch up your training, switch up the movements, exercises, amount of sets, low volume, high intensity, higher volume, lower intensity at times, you know, always switch up your training, especially if you've plateaued in strength and aesthetics. So say you have a program you follow, right? After six weeks of doing that program, swap out every single exercise. This allows for a different kind of stimulus, which promotes further growth and will lead to more gains. Next obvious one, progressive overload achieved by increasing weight slash reps over time, week by week. You're gonna wanna try increase the weight by 1.5 to three pounds per week and increase the reps you do by one or two reps. Next, your understanding of biomechanics, which essentially means your understanding of muscle function, which basically just comes with knowledge accumulation. Because if you understand how muscles work, the line of pull, the line of push, biomechanics as a whole, you know which exercises are actually optimal, not just what tic tacers say are optimal. You can be like, you can watch that tic tac and be like, oh yeah, that is actually an optimal exercise. Or you can know, oh, this guy's full of shit. I don't know why he's saying that. That's like the worst exercise I've seen in my life. So just educate yourself on YouTube, man. Press subscribe. Next is stability. The idea of using stable exercise to isolate muscles and using slightly less stable exercise to promote mobility and functionality. This isn't really that important because your muscles don't care what you do to simulate them. They don't know if you're using a dumbbell or if you're using a machine to curl the weight. You know what I mean? They will grow either way. Having said that, some machines provide a better strength curve. So for example, the leg extension machine provides a unique strength curve for shortening your quad muscle, which no free weight does that, right? There's no free weight which can replicate a leg extension. I would say it's essential for beginners especially to also include unstable exercises into your program, like barbell squats, barbell shoulder press, barbell deadlifts, you know? These are also very important for hormonal output and for, you know, maximizing overall results in the gym. Next is soreness or DOMS as they're known. You need to understand that this is not an indicator of muscle growth. Although it can be, all it is is that it is your body adapting to a new stimulus or a new movement, not necessarily a sign of progress. Although muscle damage does generate hypertrophy, but you know, if just cause you're sore, don't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna grow. It's not how it works. Don't change your program if you feel sore, okay? This will go away, just prioritize recovery. Next is the pump. The pump is a byproduct of your workout, not again, a primary indicator of muscle growth, although it is important because it has ties to mind muscle connection your ability to effectively train a muscle. Just like DOMS, it's not a sole indicator of muscle growth, but it is part of the equation. You need to prioritize hard sets over chasing the pump to better generate hypertrophy. Although both a hard set and a nasty pump is the money. Another one is frequency. Frequency is something important you need to understand. Pay attention to how often you train your muscle groups. As I said, optimize your volume, your intensity. Don't train a muscle back to back. Your legs may need two days of recovery. Your shoulders just one. You don't need to train a muscle group twice a week. That is a BS, okay? Don't listen to anyone who says that. That's not optimal whatsoever. Four or five training days a week, I'd say is on the money. Even low as three days maybe of really low volume, but really high intensity 
training, but six, seven days a week, forget it. Moving on to types of sets. Supersets, again, are like drop sets, like rest poses, are valuable in the sense that they save you time on your workouts. So if you need to get to an appointment, you need to go get a trim and you're late for your trim, just do a superset instead of doing two movements. So you pair two exercises together that either train different muscle groups. So let's say you're doing curls, you superset that with pushdowns. Or you just if you're just training one muscle group, you do pushdowns and you go to extensions or dips like that with no rest in between sets. Next are back off sets. So this is a lot of something I used to talk about a lot on the channel. Before I sort of started talking about straight sets, I used to do top sets and back off sets. And I still sometimes do. These help you clean, accumulate more volume, which could give you a different kind of stimulus, help with the mind muscle connection. Some people react better to lower rep ranges. So to make your workout more effective, add in a back off set and a top set. So if I take my top set, my first set, I do eight reps till failure. My back off set, I'd lighten the weight and so that I fail at 12 reps, for example. This, as I said, can improve a minor muscle connection and lead to muscle growth, rather than just doing two straight sets using the same weight, although that's also equally as effective for the majority of people. Next, cardio. Cardio should be a staple, okay? What does Sam Sulik say? He always says, do your cardio. So listen to Sam Sulik, fam. Obviously, he's gonna help you lose fat, stay lean year round, better blood circulation, better pumps, better health. So do some low intensity, steady state cardio three to four times a week on the treadmill, maybe incline treadmill, slow walk, bike, up to you. Another thing, central nervous system fatigue, i.e. hoping can be an excuse that you should try limit using. Don't use an excuse not to go to the gym or push yourself in the gym just because you feel tired. Most of the time your body's just lying to you. What you are is just kind of lazy, bro. So if it's not your rest day, get up and lift. I don't care how you feel. Next is tut. Time under tension. Time under tension is, this, we're not calling it that, all right? We're calling it tempo. Controlling your tempo is S tier muscle building principle. Very important. Focus on tempo and lifting speed to maximize muscle growth. Slow eccentrics, as slow as four seconds maybe. Two seconds super deep stretch at the bottom. Two second hard contraction squeeze at the top. Very, very important. Next is range of motion. Range of motion is essential, but don't become obsessed with it, as partial reps can and are very valuable in stimulating more hypertrophy. For example, yes, get in as many quality full range of motion reps as you can on your movement, but once you've legit failed doing proper form, bang out partials always at the end of every set. Big secret to muscle growth. Next is incorporating single limb or unilateral movements like single arm lat pull down, single arm preacher curl. These can help obviously fix mind muscle connection imbalances between both sides of the body, which is gonna lead to more balanced proportionate physique, more muscle growth. If one arm or one shoulder is smaller than the other, this is gonna help. Next, don't do cheat reps from the get go. You can't do cheat bicep curls, they won't work for you. They're not the same as partials. They're not good for muscle growth especially on isolation or cable movements. I'm gonna translate the word cheating into partial reps, okay? That's the only time you should cheat is at the end once you've failed and you wanna push beyond failure using partial reps. But don't off the bat use a weight you can't handle and start doing cheating reps. Next are isometric holds, which are good for improving strength and generating hypertrophy. They do contribute to muscle growth a lot. As I said, squeezing the contraction and holding the contraction is an isometric hold. Pausing at the bottom, holding the stretch is an isometric hold. You're working your stabilizer muscles at the top and you're lengthening the muscle at the bottom. You are strong in both positions, very strong, much stronger than you are on pushing the weight up, part of the movement. Mike Menser actually said that the best way to generate hypertrophy is not to do the concentric, just to control the negative and pause in the contraction, essentially is what he said and to take meth as a pre-workout. So I don't know if we should listen to the guy, to be honest, but something you need to consider, right? Isometric holds. Another one is proper technique, vital for muscle growth, okay? Because it directs stress to the muscle. And also it depends on your biomechanics and individuals differ in terms of how they perform movements. But either way, get your form right, look up videos on how to perform exercises correctly. And if you don't have good form, bro, you need to improve it. Because with good form comes the next part, mind-muscle connection a good technique to focus on engaging and recruiting the muscle you're targeting. Don't use extremely light weights to do that, obviously, but you wanna use a weight that's hard that you can still feel the muscle contract. Another underrated one, which I just touched on, is weighted stretching. The literature says that it is so effective at generating hypertrophy, even more than like getting full ranges of motion sometimes. So when the muscle is fully lengthened, typically, when it's fully stretched at the bottom and holding that for like 30 seconds. This should only be done 
at the end of your workout. Treat this as like some sort of intensity technique that you can do. So say you finish off with tricep extensions. Once you've failed the last rep of your last set, hold the stretch position for 30 seconds. This is gonna rip muscle fibers apart, damage the muscle even more, get more blood in there, and generate more hypertrophy. Next is locking out on exercises. Not that important and really misunderstood for bodybuilders. But obviously, for, if you're a powerlifter, you need to get the weight up fully, right? You need to lock out. So this typically applies to when resistance is occurring in the length and position. So your compound movements, your squats, presses, rather than your cable isolation movements, because that's when you really need to get a full range of motion to get that squeeze. But say you're doing like Sam Sulik, when he does that technique where he like goes like two thirds of the way up, that's actually kind of optimal for movements like incline Smith, like dumbbell shoulder press. You don't need to go all the way up and pause at the top. Save that for the isolation movements when you are, you know, squeezing. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. You don't need to lock out, but I would say always make sure you're getting a full range of motion for the most part. For example, on your squat or leg press, you don't need to fully lock out. Just as tension's about to come off, go back down again. Also, proper bracing is the next one you need to make sure you're doing sometimes. If you're doing a heavy squat, brace your core, tight your core, and go down. This could prevent injury. Also, one that I always go on about, exercise order. This can significantly impact the effectiveness of your workout. The exercises should align with your specific goals and what you're trying to bring up. The most important body parts, which are gonna be the ones that are lacking most for you, you hit them first and you descend in the order of most important to least important. Next on that note is exercise selection. What exercises should you choose? This again depends on the individual and is very subjective. Although I would say choose exercise that allows you to progress, to get stronger, easier. You have freedom when it comes to bodybuilding to choose whatever exercise you wanna do. So experiment with everything. Next is rest between sets. You don't need to be overly strict. As long as you can recover and perform the next set to the best of your ability, the exact duration is not crucial, but I'd say like basically as soon as your heart rate's down and you're ready to go again. Also, mobility, okay? Look, I ain't bragging, but I used to be kind of athletic, bro. But then I started building muscle and forgot all about that. And now I am far less athletic, far less mobile and it's kind of embarrassing, bro. Mobility exercises you should do, okay? Do a sport. That's the easiest, most fun way to maintain your mobility. Play some basketball on your rest days or football or something that keeps you agile, keeps you like not looking like that one guy, like that big ass bodybuilder who like sprints on Instagram. You know that guy? Not like that. Lastly is meal timing and supplementation. Meal timing, I'd say one hour before you lift and one hour after you lift. And then there's supplements like creatine. But the main focus should be on knowing the right foods to eat, proper nutrition, and you know what those foods are, bro. Not KFC, and consistent training. Supplements provide minimal gains, minimal. And that's it for now, okay? I'm sorry for this long uh, video, but hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this will benefit you and help you build muscle, help you lose fat. And if I missed anything, let me know. And make sure to check out Barbell Apparel in the link in the description to cop one of my hoodies, oversized pump covers, which make you look 10 times bigger than you actually are. Also make sure to check out the School of Aesthetics, which is my private coaching community so I can help you build muscle, lose fat, and turn you into a Greek god. But other than that, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.